Hi, my name is Eric Almus. I'm an advertising photographer from Norway, but live and work mostly in the United States. Now, I get a lot of questions about gear, a lot of questions both on Facebook and on email about what kind of lenses to use for landscape, what kind of lenses to use on portrait, what kind of software do I use, what kind of cameras do I use? And I'm gonna to try to answer those questions right here, showing you what's in my roller bag, uh, which is pretty much all I travel with. In the last 12 months, uh, we have visited eight countries on five different continents on assignment equals to about 280 days of travel. So it's a lot of travel and it's useful in those situations to be pretty effective and have sort of a narrow small package to travel with. I know that a lot of photographers do travel with a lot of gear and I do things very, very simple. Um, I don't use all that much light and when we need to, we try to rent that stuff. We rarely bring it with us. Uh, so what goes with me, it's here which is um, a Think Tank camera roller bag. I'm gonna go through that real quick, but first, this goes with me all the time. On the plane, does not leave um, my side. So, smaller planes sometimes to say, oh, you have to check it. Uh, I try to negotiate, try to always bring this with me, put it in my lap, underneath the seat in front of me, wherever it needs to, to go in order for me to uh, bring this with me. The second thing is this. It's a Tenba uh, computer case for my iMac. In between this and the iMac, I am a portable photographer and I can work you know, pretty much anywhere in the world. Um, on top of this, I have two tripods, which I stick in my clothing bag. Uh, one goes with me and my assistant who goes with me uh, takes one. And with that, we are on the road. So we're gonna go through this pretty quick. Here, batteries, 5D uh, phase one batteries. Miscellaneous, uh, card holders, tape measure. I do a lot of composites. We also always uh, want to know how tall the camera is from the ground and how far away it is from the subject. It's a good thing to have. These things are for strobes. And we rent strobes most of the time. We do use uh, Profoto 7Bs. Uh, we have a few of those, but usually we rent them. What I don't like to rent is these because they are really fickle and um, you don't want to show up on set and don't have transmitters that work. So we have three pocket wizards uh, in here, one for me to transmit with and one, uh, two to receive with for the two 7Bs that I usually like to rent. So that's that. Now for the main stuff. Um, I photograph a lot of my images on a medium format camera. What you see here is a contacts, old school. They don't make it anymore, uh, but I've been shooting with this camera for must be 15 years. And I truly, truly love these things. Carl Zeiss lenses, the 80 millimeter, it's an F2.0, and it's just beautiful, beautiful glass. And when the digital came around, I decided to stick with this camera. I didn't really find that new Hasselblad to be as beautiful in the glass as these lenses were. So I stuck with this system. Uh, we have three of these cameras. Usually one is at repair at some point. Um, so we have three of these. Goes in a separate roller that my assistant carry. Uh, which is not part of the primary package, which I'm showing you here. So, contacts camera, we have two finders. The vertical finder, which I love, enables me to look like this and connect with the person like this. And we do have a vertical finder as well, which goes on top. 80 millimeter lens, we have a 140 for longer stuff, and we have a 45. When it comes to the question of what lens do I use, um, let me touch on that in a minute. Let me just go through the, the basics first because uh, I get a lot of questions about that as well. 40 millimeter, uh, 45 millimeter, 140 and an 80. Three lenses that I have for this body. Uh, on the back of it is a face. It's an IQ 160. An amazing, amazing piece of digital capture. Not amazing on high ISOs and I have to say I'm really excited. The IQ 250 came out. It's supposed to be extraordinary on high ISO. And even though it has less pixels, I think it will be a trade-in for me since it's better on higher ISO. I like to shoot low light, like to shoot long exposures. And uh, this face um, has a disadvantage actually on higher ISO. But for that, it's extraordinary. I have, this is my third generation of the face backs. So I'm, um, I'm a good fan. All right. Another thing, um, I get a lot of questions about these me medium format things. And, it's not necessary. When you're starting out, 
even at a professional level, 60 megapixels is a lot. I usually process these at 80 or 90 percent. I never really use the full uh, pixels. In the way I shoot, I usually take one picture here and a picture here and I stitch them together. And by the time I'm done, I have this massive, sometimes 500 megabyte flat files. And there's absolutely no reason to. It's way too big. So there might be some print producers that say, oh yes, we want a really big file. But uh, in my experience, working for advertising agencies the past 15 years, um, most of the time the canons, which we're going to get to now, is more than enough. So, the workhorse in my photography is this. The usual Canon 5D Mark III. Now, it might come to a surprise to you that I uh, say that this is the workhorse rather than this. If you shoot stuff with energy, things that moves, uh, the face gets a little slow. It shoots about a frame a second versus the 5D, I think you get seven or eight frames a second. So if you shoot a biker or someone that's running or something that has some sense of motion to it, the 5D does a better job. So it's really two things, two tools for two different approaches. Quieter landscapes, portraits, often the face. For things that's moving, things that's a little quicker, if I'm going one, going on my own somewhere, hiking or whatever it is, this comes with me. It's lighter and, e and easier. Um, when I do that, when I go just myself with one camera, what goes on it, it's the 2470. This is an amazing piece of glass. Now, if you're in the market to buy a 2470 used, don't do it. The older version of this um, can't be compared to this new version. This came out about a year and a half ago, and it can't be compared. This is extraordinary, it's sharp, it's beautiful. The other lens was sloppy on the focus, it wasn't quite sharp. So if you want to buy this lens, uh, make sure it's the new version um, or buy it new from a good retailer like B&H or Adorama or Sammy's if you're local to the, to the West Coast. So these two are my go-to things. Um, in this package, there's another 5D, which is filming me right now, so I can't show you that, but there's two 5Ds in this, uh, in this case. On that lens, it's a 24-105, which is a beautiful all-around lens as well, and we use that a lot for the behind the scenes that we're doing. In addition to those two zoom lenses, 50 millimeter 1.4. Love this thing. Just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful piece of glass. Uh, here, this is an 85 um, port red lens. Also, um, a 1.8, super fast and beautiful. And you talk to fashion photographers, uh, this might be their go-to lens. It's absolutely extraordinary, creates these creamy, creamy highlights, softer focus in the back if you do use uh, a smaller aperture. So this is beautiful for portraiture. Focus cup for the 5D when we do motion. And for me, when it comes to fixed glass lenses, I like it to be slightly wide. Um, so among the fixed glass, this is my favorite. It's a 35 one four. Just uh, really, really beautiful. Now, the reason for me saying it's my favorite, it's because the way I see. Not so much, you know, that one is better than the other. And I get a lot of questions about that. Questions like, what lens should I use for landscape photography? And I can't really answer that for you. Um, my vision is slightly wide. And if you look behind you, um, I'm now at my family's summer house. Um, in a place called Strin in Norway. And this landscape is just extraordinary. And Norway has this bigness to it, this massiveness. And in order to capture that, uh, you need wider lenses. So this is what I grew up with, and that's what I wanted to see. And I wanted to sort of embody this bigness, and that doesn't come with a longer lens for me. That's why you don't see the 8200, for instance, uh, or 7200 uh, zoom lens for Canon, which I also have. But I don't travel with it. I use that for specialty things. Uh, it's not my go-to lens whatsoever. So what I do uh, is slightly wide in all this. 35, 24 for the medium, no, for the 5D, and 45 mostly for the face. Um, I had a conversation with Aaron at Flurn. Um, and if you don't know them, you should check out flurn.com. Amazing, amazing Photoshop tutorials. Um, 
And we talked about the subject matter of how you see and how to find that. And now we have this amazing tool in uh, the metadata that you get from the pictures that you take. So open up Lightroom or Capture One, which is the software I use, and look at the metadata. And then look at your pictures and you can see pretty instantly what kind of focal length that you're gravitating towards. Uh, Aaron did it, and he ended up pretty much exactly around 35 or 50. That was his preferred. And you might not even know it, but if you instinctively go to a certain focal length, which you could see in that metadata, that is how you see. So if you're wondering what lens to buy next, buy one that fit that metadata. Buy one that sort of fits the way you see. You might have grown up in a city where things are tighter, and you see textures, and you see color, and you see small snippets and small stories. And maybe you're a longer lens guy. Maybe the 85 or 70 to 200 is the lens for you. So all I can encourage you to do, same thing as in my DVD, I encourage you to find your visual language. Find your focal length. Um, how is it that you see? Do you see close up? Do you see wide? You know, I see, I see really wide, and I see even wider than this. So that's why I do pictures here and pictures there, and I stitch them together, and it becomes like this really wide, wide image. So, um, that's the equipment I have. That is my tip on finding what lenses you should buy. Find the focal length that you're seeing in and, uh, and use that. So, we're going to do another session on the light gear that I use a little bit later. Uh, it's fairly simple. I touched on it, but this is my essential travel kit. Roller bag from Think Tank, two different camera systems. I have my iMac in there my tripod in my uh, clothing case. I have a backpack on top of this, which my computer goes into. Shoot a lot to the laptop as well. And uh, that's it. It's, uh, it's fairly simple. I want to say one, one last thing about camera gear. Technology has gotten so good, so amazingly good. You don't need a 5D even. You don't need a face for sure. You can go and buy a 7D or something that's even less expensive and create extraordinary, extraordinary pictures. We have become so advanced now with the editing software and the cameras that we use, so you can go out and create a body of work that will get you assignments with a very small investment when it comes to computers and, uh, and cameras. You know, when I started out, you needed a Hasselblad and you needed darker um, access and there was all this stuff. Paper and film was extraordinarily expensive and now you can, within maybe a few months of consumption of film and paper, buy the camera and lens and computer that will get you going. And after that, there's no cost. So the entry of getting into photography has become a lot less, and it's an amazing time for, for everyone to become a photographer. You can really start crafting your skill and exercise and train and sort of hone your um, skill uh, with a very little investment. So I'm really excited about that. It makes everyone work harder, makes everyone uh, try to take better pictures, and it really elevates the craft of photography. So don't think you have to go and get this stuff in order to shoot assignments on, on the level that I do. Just um, get a small camera, whatever you can afford, and it is about content. It truly is about content. It's about the ideas, the light, the flavor, and how you see things. So with that, I'm just going to say, uh, um, Thank you for watching this and uh, good luck on crafting pictures. Cheers.